Hi everybody. In this video, I would like to explain about the concept of terminology used in graph theory. The important definitions which are used in graph theory. At first, the most important definition in the graph theory are regarding the oriented graph. A graph in which the orientations of the branches are known in the given network. For example, we are considering here a network. This entire one is the network. I am obtaining the graph here. We are having the we are considering the nodes A, B, C, and D. And the element we will consider with a line or an arc between A and B, the element 2 and between this one is the A, this one is the B and this one is the C and between A and D, let it be the element number 1 and B and C the element value is 4 and B and D the element value is 5 and between A, C and D the element value is 6 and uh, A and C the element value is 3. Here we are giving the direction of currents uh, in the network from A to B the current flowing direction is this one and uh, from B to C the current flowing direction similarly as this is meeting at a point at a junction here it is divided and the current flowing is like this fashion. And the same orientations here we will consider this one on this graph we are giving the orientation we are giving the same orientation here same orientations here in this elements of the network in the elements of a network see this one The orientation of the branches are known in the given network that will be imposed on the graph. This particular graph, this particular graph is called as oriented graph. But in the case of these uh, unoriented graph, these orientations are not presented in the graph these orientations are not present in the graph that means there is no representation of the current flowing directions in the elements of a graph that graph we will call as unoriented graph see this egg see this one for these we are not represented any current flowing directions any orientation here and this particular graph is called as unoriented graph this particular graph is called as unoriented graph. Here, an important point that oriented graph is also called as directed graph. Oriented graph is also called as directed graph. Then, coming to the next one. that is the planar graph and non planar graph here in the planar graph it is a graph drawn on a two dimensional plane so that no two branches intersect at a point no two branches intersect at a point which is not a node here is an important point which is not a node that means for a clear understanding, I am considering again the graph here. 
I am considering this graph and there is no intersection between the elements. Elements is nothing but a branches. There is no intersection between the two branches and this graph is called as a planar graph is called as a planar graph. But in the case of non planar graph, in the case of non planar graph, it is a graph drawn in a two dimensional plane. So, that two or more branches intersect at a point other than nodes on a graph. See this diagram, we are having the four nodes here, four nodes here, this one is A this one is B, this one is C and this one is D. The elements between A, B, B, D, B, C and D, C and A, B and there is a joining between the A to C, we are having an element and along with the one, we are having an element between B to C. Other than the nodes, the two branches are intersect here. When this will be happened in a graph, we will call as a non planar graph, the intersection. The intersection existed at a point other than the node is called as non planar graph. In the third one, subgraph. The subgraph means it is a subset of branches and nodes of a graph. And in this, we are having the two subgraphs, and one is called as a proper subgraph, and the second one is called as an improper subgraph. In the case of proper subgraph, we are considering a subgraph contains branches and nodes less in number than those on the graph. For example, I am considering here a graph. From this one, I am considering one subgraph which is consisting of a, B and D nodes, we are having the elements this two one A, B, D. This is one proper subgraph, why because this one is called as a proper subgraph, this one is having less number of branches and nodes in this graph. Along with the one, I am considering the another example from this I am considering only the nodes A, C, D, B, C, D, B, C, D nodes here in between the one we are having an element and in between the one we are having the element and this is also a proper subgraph we are having the less number of branches and a nodes. But in the case of improper subgraph it contains all the nodes of a graph which contains all the nodes of a graph. I am considering the same graph here and from this we are considering a subgraph and that sub particular subgraph is having all the nodes. In this one what are the nodes here A, B, C and D. Okay? I am considering all the nodes here A, B, C and D. While we are considering all the nodes from the main graph that is called as an uh, improper subgraph. Then coming to the next one that is the rank of a graph. The rank regarding the rank of a graph 
this rank of a graph is represented with the letter capital R. If the graph existed n number of nodes, then the rank of a graph it is represented with an expression called as R is equal to n minus 1. R is equal to n minus 1. For example, we are having the number of nodes let it be the n is equal to 4 n means nodes number of nodes and the rank of the graph is as 4 minus 1 it is equal to 3 the rank of the graph is 3. Then the main important definition in this graph theory is tree and co-tree. Tree means a tree is a set of branches with all nodes not forming any loop or closed path. Here I am considering a graph, this is a graph, I am considering this graph. For this graph, I am obtaining a tree. Here is the thing that a graph, it must be having all the nodes, but it does not forming a loop and every graph is produces a number of trees that will be produced here as I am considering all the nodes here A, B, C and you will obtain a graph while connecting here A, B, B, D and D, C. A, B, D, C. That means this particular tree, this entire one is called as a tree. This tree, it is considered as a tree. Why? Because you are considered as a tree. It is having all the nodes, but it is not forming a loop. That is why you will call it as a tree. Here, the elements or the branches of a tree, it is called as a twig, it is called as a twig. And here, the properties of the tree are the properties of a tree are tree contains all the nodes on your graph all all the nodes on the graph and tree does not contains any closed path does not contain any closed path these are the third one in a tree there exists only one path between pair of nodes only one path between any pair of nodes And uh, the fourth one, in a tree, a minimum end nodes or terminal nodes or terminal nodes are two or And here, every connected graph has at least one tree. Every connected have 
at least one tree one tree the rank of the tree is same as the rank of the graph that is r is equal to n minus 1 here is an important thing that if there are n number of nodes on a graph then the tree of a graph contains n minus 1 twigs n minus 1 twigs this is an important point and regarding the coterie a set of branches forming a complement of a tree that means here other than these elements which is forming a coterie i am writing that uh, elements as a dotted lines other than the elements of a tree and uh, these elements are forming a coterie and these elements we will call it as a link links or chords c h o r d s chords links or chords in general the number of branches of a coterie equal to b e minus b minus n minus of n minus 1 here b is represents the number of branches and n represents the nodes and the last one that is loop here a loop is a connected subgraph of a connected graph such that at each node there are two branches incident it means that if a two terminals are made to coincide it will generate a loop for example it is a subgraph i am considering the b c and d of a previous graph it is a subgraph here this subgraph is forming a loop the properties of this one is they are exactly two paths between any pair of nodes between any pair of nodes between any pair of nodes we are we are producing the two paths second point is there exist at least two branches in a loop at least two branches in a loop and the third point the maximum possible branches in a loop are equal to equal to number of nodes maximum possible branches it is equals to the number of nodes these all are the main important definitions which are required for the calculation of gap theory thank you